Hi everyone, today we're going to be graphing parabolas. This lesson today is a continuation of what you heard yesterday in the Khan Academy video. So let's get started. First of all, from what you heard yesterday, when you're working with parabolas, which this graph right here, whoops, this graph right here is a parabola graph. And when you're graphing parabolas, they are based off of the quadratic function, which we worked with last chapter, chapter 9. And quadratic functions are in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And parabolas always have a vertex. And right here, the vertex is at point zero, zero. And in this situation, this parabola is fake going up. And today, in today's lesson, we're going to explain how the parabolas are graphed based on your quadratic function. So the first idea we're going to talk about today is the vertex form of a quadratic function. And the vertex form of a quadratic function is in the form of y equals a parenthesis x minus h squared plus k and h comma k is in the form x comma y thinking of the vertex of your parabola the line x as it mentioned represents h this is the axis of symmetry and when a when A here is positive, the vertex is the lowest point on your parabola. And when A is negative, the vertex is the highest point on the parabola. And I'm going to show you an example of what this definition is talking about on this next slide. Please be aware, though, of this form here, the vertex form of a quadratic function, because you will need to know that form. Okay, here we have some examples of parabolas. Look at, we have the first vertex form being y equals x minus 1 squared plus 1. Notice we don't have a value a in front of the parentheses there, but since we don't have a negative or positive sign, we're going to say this is a positive a because if you look at the second graph here, there's a negative sign in front of the parentheses. Remember on the previous slide, they said if there's a positive A, then your vertex is going to be at the very bottom point of your parabola graph. When you have a negative A shown here on the second vertex form, then your vertex is going to be at the highest point and notice your parabola goes facing down. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect how we find the vertex working with quadratic functions. And so what we're going to talk about from this point forward relates a lot to what we learned in 9.8 with taking quadratic functions and setting them equal to zero. So in 9.8 we learned about finding the zeros of a quadratic function by factoring and setting the function equal to zero and the zeros can be used to find the vertex of your parabola graph. So here we have an example. They want us to use the zeros to find the vertex and the vertex form of the quadratic function. Remember the vertex form was on the previous slide and that was in the form of y equals a parenthesis x minus h squared plus k. That is the vertex form here. Here we have a quadratic form. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. So what we first have to do is we have to factor out this quadratic function. So I factored it out here. So we have x minus 4 and we have x minus 2. Well, notice the symbols in here. We have a negative and a positive. Remember, when you multiply two negatives, you get a positive, and we have to think what two values multiplied together gives you 8, 
in, when they're added together would give you negative 6. Well, negative 4 in, times negative 2 gives you positive 8. Negative 4 plus negative 2 would give me negative 6. So that's how I factored this out here. Remember from section 9.8, we then set these factored out situations equal to 0. So we had x minus 4 equals 0. And when we solve for x here, x is going to equal 4. So that's how we got x equals 4 here. And then remember, we also did x minus 2 equals 0. And if you solve for x, x here is going to equal 2. So that's how we got x equals 2 right there. So this all reviews what we learned last chapter. So if we found x equals 4 and x equals 2, the zeros of the function are going to be 4 and 2. So what we now have to do is find the midpoint between 4 and 2, or what we call the average of the x-coordinate of these two zeros, 4 and 2. So it will help us find the vertex. So remember when finding the average, you add 2 together and divide by 2. So we're going to add 4 and 2, my two x's, to get 6. 6 divided by 2 is going to give me x equals 3. So what I just did is I found the midpoint, and my midpoint for x is going to be 3. Since we found that x equals 3 on the last slide, we're now going to take x equals 3 and plug it back into my original quadratic function, which was y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. And I'm going to plug in 3 for x, shown in this example here. So when I simplify this, 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8, we've solved for y now, and we get y equals negative 1. So we found our x on the previous slide and got x equals 3. We now found our y, and y equals negative 1. So we have here 3 comma negative 1, and this is our vertex of our parabola. So here it is. And then, once we find the vertex, we want to put this back into the vertex form. And remember, 3 represents x, and in the form that represents your h. Negative 1 represents y, and that represents your k in the vertex form. So your final answer in the vertex form is going to be y equals, parenthesis, x minus 3 squared minus 1. So that's how we find the vertex of a parabola, and then that's how we um, put this into the vertex form. For homework, you need to do a worksheet on graphing parabolas. If you're still a little confused on this, please go back and watch the video from yesterday, Wednesday, and re-watch this video as well. When I return tomorrow, we will review and go over these these two lessons, and I will go over any questions that you have. See you tomorrow. Bye.